Nine-year-old Angie Hausman went missing from her bus stop and was found nine days later in the woods of St. Charles County. This animal cut short a life of an angel. Investigators say she was sexually assaulted, tortured, and left alive to die in the snow. Um, as, as you all know, uh, we are here today to talk about uh, some answers to a question that uh, many of us in this region, many of us in this room in particular, have had over the last 25 plus years, and that is what happened to Angie Osman. Back on November 18th, 1993, that was a Thursday afternoon, about 4 p.m., the school bus had just let out. That was the last time Angie Hausman was seen alive. She did not return home from the school bus at the normal time. She wasn't seen early in the evening. She wasn't seen later in the evening. And it was a few hours into that that uh, we realized that we had a, a crime scene on our hands. Mike's back from the St. Anne area with the latest. Derek? And Larry, by now, most of our viewers know this story. Nine-year-old Angie Hausman gets off the school bus last Thursday, a block away from her St. Anne home, and never gets to the front door. Despite this massive infusion of manpower, there is still no sign of the missing girl, though no one seems ready to give up. I, I've never seen anything like it. Little girl gets off a school bus, and she's 100 feet from her house, and disappears in the thin air. I don't understand it. How many times I, I come home and I lay in bed and I stare at the ceiling and I'm talking to myself and my wife nudges me, go to sleep, you know, you're not going to solve it tonight. It's something that you, that you can't get out of your mind, especially when it happened on your watch. And I was at the crime scene when she was found. Sadly, on November 27th, 1993, which was about nine days later, at about 10.45 in the morning, which was a Saturday morning, Angie's body was found by a hunter in the August A. Bush Wildlife Area off South 94 here in St. Charles County. Angie's nude body was found partially covered with snow. Her head was wrapped in duct tape, except for her nose. Her hands were handcuffed behind her back, and her left arm was bound to a tree. There were deep lacerations to both her left and her right wrist, and also to her right thigh. The duct tape around her wrist appeared to have been put there so as to slow the bleeding. Crime scene evidence revealed that Angie had suffered from a significant violent sexual assault. Crime scene evidence further indicated that Angie was alive as she was bound and left in the woods, and that she struggled extensively to free herself before she ultimately perished. She was found to be malnourished, dehydrated, and appeared to have been tortured. The official cause of death was determined to be hypothermia. Major K-Squad investigators have been fielding hundreds of calls generated by this sketch. Police say a man fitting this description has been seen driving through Hausman's neighborhood both before and after her abduction, and police are not ruling out it may be Hausman's killer returning to the scene of the crime. At the St. Charles Justice Center, we were shown forensic technicians busy processing some of the 150 pieces of evidence taken from the crime scene. Much of the painstaking work has been going on since Angie Hausman was found Saturday. These pieces of gaffer's tape may reveal latent fingerprints, and a forensic technician was dusting this beer bottle for clues. It's, uh, it's been probably the toughest case that I've had to deal with since I've taken office. Four, four and a half years ago. Uh, and we've had some tough ones, there's no doubt about that. I 
don't think a week went by that I didn't go check some fact out in the case. There were so many leads to this and so many people determined to solve it that you couldn't say that that lead is not a good lead to look at. So it would be to the point where, you know, if we had 15 leads called in that week, we were going to have 15 different investigations going in there. Why would you do that? Why would you tie somebody to a tree? Somebody who did not want to do the killing himself, mm -hmm. uh, did not want to see the results of what was going to happen and uh, wash his hands of it and maybe consider that you know he wasn't totally to blame for this. Well, if we can't get him here then he'll get his in the hereafter. Uh, I'm, I'm Ron Bone or Ronald Bone. Uh, I'm a stepdad. Uh, maybe stepdad but I'm dead. I, mean, I raised Angie up when she was a year and ten months old up until the time they took it or so. What's really new, I've heard see people saying they probably got the guy, but I don't know. They never told me about it. If they did, I don't remember hearing about it, but I'm, I'm more tired than I am alive, so. <laughs> they showed me pictures of somebody, but I mean, the picture looks familiar, but I, I don't know where actually I've seen it. I could have been seen him at work. I could have seen him walking around the streets or in the stores or something. I mean, you're talking 20 some odd years ago. After years and years of investigation, after hundreds, if not thousands, of leads, Brian notified the lead detective, Ed Copeland, that he had analyzed the pink trim on two of the torn pieces of the victim's underpants that were found at the crime scene. Near the spot where one of the pieces had been torn, Bryant found DNA consistent with a mixture of two individuals, the victim, Angie Hausman, and an individual by the name of Earl Webster Cox. New information tonight in a 26-year-old murder case. Last night, we broke the news of developments in this murder investigation. The I-team has learned through police sources recently retested DNA on Angie's clothing led them to this inmate. The suspect was born and raised in St. Louis. He was court-martialed in 1980 for sex offenses involving children while stationed in Germany. He was again charged with sexually abusing a child in 1989. He was released and back on the streets in St. Louis in 1992, months before Angie Hausman was murdered. He also lived less than three blocks from Angie's home at the time of the murder. He moved to Colorado where in 2003, he was caught with thousands of images of child pornography. At that time, he was also charged with trying to entice a minor across state lines. Cox was initially identified through CODIS and his DNA was then collected with his consent and it was retested. Cox was the major contributor of DNA at the location tested. For the portion consistent with Cox's DNA, only one in 58.1 trillion unrelated individuals selected at random could be expected to have the same profile. The entire population on Earth is only 7.8. 53 billion. So multiply the Earth's population times 8,000, and that's the likelihood that we find another individual that matches this DNA profile, the same as Earl W. Cox. I miss my baby. Angie Houseman's mother died of cancer before knowing who killed her daughter. Her brother, who was only two when his sister was killed, was inside the courtroom when Earl Cox admitted his guilt. He's a very sick individual for the things that he did. He doesn't deserve the breath that he's taking at this moment. Seeing him for the first time in face, I was angry. I was mad, hurt. He took everything from my family. And after all these years, it was torture not knowing, but maybe not knowing was best because what I heard in there was horrible that she had to go through. And that was the worst thing that our family had to hear. Angie's aunt says her sister just wanted to know why her daughter was taken. In court, Cox only said Angie got into his car and did not elaborate. Some details of the crime may never be known, but Angie will never be forgotten. During the guilty plea and sentencing here, the judge said even a parent's worst nightmare can't imagine what Cox did to Angie Hausman. Uh, 
Um, so this case, uh, it's, it's about much, much more than just uh, the, the DNA analysis. Uh, but in particular, the, the finding that was the linchpin for us was good science, good lab work, and just good luck. Um, it's like finding a needle in a haystack. Um, you know, it's not like on TV or CSI where something goes to the crime lab and within a few minutes they find a DNA sample. Uh, it's much more tedious than that. Without uh, bodily fluids such as blood or seminal fluid, there's no way to know where DNA may exist on a particular item. And so that's why it's literally like looking for a needle in a haystack. And, and Brian and I joked about this uh, earlier this morning. They were looking for a needle in a haystack without a magnet, but they still found the needle. Now, Ron Bone has told some of us in the media that he was considered a suspect in this case. Is he involved in this at all? Here's what I can tell you. Um, we do believe that it's very possible another person was involved. At this point, until we have more information, nobody can be eliminated as a suspect. So I'll just leave it at that. So there could be more arrests? There could be. We're talking a week of torture, sexual abuse, um, you name it, and ultimately murder. Normal people can't do that. That's a monster. <laughs>